built desire to dominate over each other. Maybe some of us do, but he's not assuming it's true of everyone. Our acquisition of power is just the acquisition of means to satisfy our desires. And anticipating that we will have new desires in the future, we want to expand our powers. We want to expand the means available to us to satisfy them. So I want to come back now to um, the question, this is related to the question of whether Hobbes is a psychological egoist or not. Whether he thinks that we are only interested in maybe selfish goals. Um, whether we're only interested in um, satisfying narrowly selfish whether the desires that we have, that is, the things that we call good, are narrowly selfish. Um, so I want to, I mean, passages like this certainly make it seem like he is. But I don't think that's what Hobbes is saying. I don't think he's saying that we only have desires to dominate and overpower Maybe we do have those desires, some of us do anyway, um, but they're not the only ones that people have. Um, so, um, I have a daughter, and um, I tell you that I have a desire for her to grow up healthy and um, happy and to become a well-adjusted adult. That's a desire that I have. Um, I act as best I can to try to achieve that end, I take that to be something that is good. What does it mean to say that I treat that to be good? It means I have a desire for it. It means I act in that direction. Um, and I don't see any reason for Hobbes to deny that. I don't see any reason for Hobbes to doubt whether I have a genuine desire for that end. That end, I say again, is for my daughter to become a happy, well-adjusted adult. But your means are still selfish because it's still to satisfy your desire, not to satisfy any desire for her. She, at this moment in time, does not care whether or not she becomes a well-adjusted adult. Maybe she doesn't. Okay. How old is she? How old is she? She's 13. She doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> But what I want to emphasize is that the content of my desire, what I call good, is something about her. But it's still self, like, ultimately still selfish. So, what I want to distinguish is that desire is about you. It's my desire. And so I certainly do want to satisfy my desire. That much is right. But what it's a desire for, it's the end doesn't involve me, at least the way I say it. Maybe you want to argue that the only reason I want her to become a healthy, well-adjusted, happy adult is so that she will express gratitude toward me. But that's a further claim, and, and I dispute it. I, I, I don't think that's really what I want. So, so one way of capturing this distinction is to distinguish between what's the good of a person and what is good in a person. That is, the good that we're talking about certainly is my good in the sense that it's my desire, and therefore I'm calling it good. But on the other hand, the content of that desire isn't about me. It's about someone else. It's about something else. The end that I that I take to be good isn't about me. I say it one more time. It is my desire, but what it's about, what it's in, so to speak, is not about me. And but who cares if I don't get that? Like if it, what I'm calling good is not my is not my dominance, is not my uh, 
uh, field. What I'm calling good is something involving someone else. And I, I'll say again. So I don't see any reason why Hobbes would prohibit this, why Hobbes would deny there could be such desires. If there are such desires, they are my desires, but they're for something that doesn't involve me. So maybe you want to say that that's still selfish because I'm only interested in satisfying my desires. But I think that's stretching what we usually think of as selfish. I mean, usually when we think of somebody as selfish. But you're thinking that that thought is not selfish because you're thinking that I, that other people are going to see that as a good thing. That you no, want no, your no. daughter to be no, no, well adjusted no. That's not. No, it's, it has nothing to do with other what other people see. The reason I'm denying it's selfish is because of its consequences. Because it's not for yourself. It's not involving right. It's not. It's not even involving myself. It's involving someone else. Yeah. It's like open to interpretation, though, because you just even say you have an aversion to the experiences that you had if your daughter wasn't involved. That's possible. That's what I said before. Maybe you want to say, really what I desire is not that she be a well-adjusted adult. Maybe what I really desire is her expressions of gratitude for me, or my feeling when I see that she's a well-adjusted adult. But I deny that too. What I really want, I tell you, is for her to be a well-adjusted adult, even if I don't experience, even if I don't experience. What I really want is for her to be a happy, well-adjusted adult, even when I'm dead. And I'm going to take steps. I mean, surely people do this. They take steps to try to achieve ends that they themselves won't experience. And I'm saying to you, I don't see any reason to think how we would rule that out. It seems like it's just a little concept of distraction using the word selfishness because you can't really act independently of yourself. I mean, if you jump from a bullet for someone, are you acting selfishly for doing someone's life? Well, good. So if you, if you jump in front of a bullet to save someone else's life, uh, on the one hand, you're doing something that you want to do, that you have a desire to do maybe, that you would view as good. So it certainly is part of your good. But, I mean, as described, you're doing it for someone else. So I don't want to make too big a case about this. I don't want to say that this is the way most of our desires are. I just want to say that Nothing in Hobbes' definition rules this out as a matter of And I think this is probably how we can make sense of his discussion or mention of natural kindness earlier on in the passage, I think. And so natural kindness doesn't mean that somehow we are not acting on our desires. Of course we are. It doesn't mean we're not acting in a way that we believe to be good. Of course we are. But the content of what we desire, the content of what we're trying to accomplish, is somebody else's benefit. That's it. That's the content. So. But what if the other person doesn't see that as a benefit? That's my question. They don't see that as a benefit. So. Okay, so let's take the example you're using with your daughter. Like I said, what if she doesn't. What if she wants to be a heroin addict when she grows up? Like, I'm, I hate to say things like that about your daughter. <laughs> don't take it personally. Okay. But, I won't take it personally. You know? Um, um, so, um, it's a little bit complicated because what I specified was... What if her desire is okay. different than your desire is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so it's a little complicated because the way I specified it was something like my desire is for her happiness. And that means something like what I desire is the satisfaction of her desires. So I may be. Well, you also use so, well adjusted adult. So okay. that's the one I'm using. Okay, well, so, um, so there's really no problem with that. I mean, so suppose 
I mean, I can have a desire for her to be present, let's say. Yeah. I desire for my daughter to be the first female president of the United States. I can have that desire, and I can try to achieve it, yeah. even if she doesn't want that at all. Yeah. There's no contradiction there. So the problem is because I specified it. But then isn't what you're doing kind of selfish because you're like pressing something on somebody else that they don't. So you're assuming, probably rightly, if that were the case, that I would be wanting to do this in order to expand my glory or something like that. I have no idea why you run, but you know. Right. That would be selfish. If the reason I'm trying to achieve that end is to satisfy my own ambition for glory, well, then my goal does involve me. And I'm willing to use someone else for my own. So when your desires are something loosely fit into somebody else, like happiness and success, it's, it's, it's not harder. just that it's loosely. It's, it's that it's sort of second order. That yeah, happiness exactly. and sec success depend them. on the satisfaction of their desires. Yeah, OK. So I could be mistaken about what their desires are, of course. That makes more sense. Good. 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 For the sake of the argument, just assume that those desires, the desire that you have for your daughter, it's got nothing to do with you, even though you can come up with all kinds of stuff, just to get all this stuff that you can't it. And just, for the sake I of just want to insist on the possibility of desires, that is, things we call good, that don't involve the narrow promotion of our. Which is selfish. Uh, well, it's possible, but it's not really that likely. Fine, fine. So maybe it's not that likely. Maybe most of our desires are selfish in the narrow sense. Maybe most of what people want is pleasure and glory for themselves. But I'm just holding out the possibility that that's not all. And I want to hold out the possibility that that's not all. Because the case that Hobbes is going to make needs to depend on, or should, better, the case that Hobbes wants to make, should not depend on an assumption of narrow selfishness. The kind of story he wants to tell about the need for justice and morality should not depend on an assumption of narrow selfishness. Should not depend on the assumption that the only thing that motivates people is their own narrow pleasure and glory. Okay, um, very last point. Um, uh, I won't get to read this to you, but look at, on page 61, look at paragraph 21, where um, he's making the case that we need to understand Proper the ideas of right, equity, law, and justice. That we need to analyze these ideas properly in order to be able to give a good defense of them. The point being that he's thinking of right, equity, law, and justice as being objective, as things that we can actually get a proper definition of and a proper and that's what he's about to do. Okay, so I probably actually will start um, this, this quote again next time. Uh, and then we'll read, uh, we'll talk about chapter 13. So you should finish for Wednesday. You should finish chapter 13 if you haven't done it already. You might get started in the morning of 14 also, so take a look at it.